The sexual identity and sexuality of women with disability is almost never talked about in India. What does someone like Kalki Koichlin think about this? And how does a woman with a severe disability herself feel about this? Welcome to the show. Kalki Koichlin recently played the role of a young girl with cerebral palsy in the film Margarita with a Straw. It was in playing this role that Kalki came to understand the life, identity and desires of a girl living with disability. When Shunali first came to me with the script, I really loved the script because nobody discusses sexuality and disability. India has many millions of people living with a disability. How often have we stopped to consider our attitudes towards them? To help you think about this, I got out on the street and asked the youth this question. Would you date a person with a disability? Here are their answers, some inspiring and others shocking. It depends. If I'm in relationship with her from first itself without disability, then if she is disabled later on, then that should be fine for me. Yes. Because I could take care of them, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I wouldn't. I think because of the frustration, they might be uh, a little like pedo types. Uh, <laughs> but it uh, depends. Uh, if they've been loved all their life, then yeah, they might be noble. I guess I would. Yeah, why not? Why? What do you mean why? How does that change the person? No. Why? Okay, I need to give the reason. Being disabled isn't a curse or something. Even if you can call a disabled person a special person, you can turn out to, uh, turn out to be special in your life or something. It doesn't matter actually. It's fine. Uh, it depends on the person, how the person is. Uh, whether they are disabled in some way, that doesn't really matter. If a person is going to be successful socially, uh, even though they are disabled, then the outside, people who are not would seem more attracted. For instance, if you, if you look at uh, uh, you know, people like Stephen Hawking, okay, he's, a, he's one of the foremost uh, you know, physicists, one of the greatest minds. He occupies Newton's chair in Cambridge University. Uh, you look at people like that. Uh, they may be have, I mean, they might be having a disability, but they also have a future and, and their generations also will have a future. So I don't mind unless I find them good. Yeah, sure, why not? To bring you a more personal insight on the topic of gender identity and sexuality of a person with a disability, I decided to also bring on camera Deepa Narasimhan. Deepa is a young woman affected by spinal muscular atrophy, a degenerative condition that has severely restricted her mobility. At 31, she can just about move her fingers and her face. But Deepa is a hero to me because she is a working woman who has figured out how to live her life full and happy despite the severe disability. That's when I thought I should really be outside exploring the world, right? I really need to break that barrier of that four walls and go do the things that I really want to do. What follows is a candid conversation with Kalki and with Deepa on a topic that you and I rarely talk about. I love Kalki, would you ever sleep with a person with a disability? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was somebody that I was attracted to and felt something with. Tell me about your experience um, with playing the role of a person with cerebral palsy in the film Margarita with a Straw. Well, it was a really scary sort of uh, challenge for me. I think when, when Shunali first came 
to me with the script. I really love the script because nobody discusses sexuality and disability. And this film just went really like all out, didn't even consider like being apologetic or anything, just talks about it in a very ordinary way, which is how it should be treated. But when I, when I saw it, I was like, I don't know if I can pull something like this off. And I actually asked Shonali, I told her, I need an audition more than you. Like, I, I want you to audition me to see if I th you think I have the capacity. So, you know, uh, and she introduced me to her cousin who has cerebral palsy, whose name is Malini Chip, who runs um, ADAPT, a center for disability in Bombay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was like the best gift I got because Malini became a friend and really like let me into her life. Like she let me follow her around in her private life as well, go home with her, with her to her parents' house, um, live with them, see how she is, you know, from morning to night, uh, go party with her. We got drunk together. We went out for dinner together. Uh, so, you know, we, and I saw her in her workplace and in her physiotherapy and swimming and, you know, all the activities which we don't normally see a person being disabled doing or we don't think they do. Uh, so um, it was eye opener for me, really. And the film itself, working in that film, playing that role, living in that wheelchair for the few days that you did. Um, what did you learn about um, the sexual identity of a person with a disability? I learned a lot uh, uh, because I, I spent all my time in that wheelchair when I was shooting just to, to try and imbibe it as much as I could uh, so I wouldn't get out of the wheelchair in between shots and things. So people, uh, people who didn't recognize me and because I wasn't glamorized at all. I mean, I had no makeup and very, you know, uh, practical, comfortable clothing, you know, uh, stretchy pants and all of that. So um, people didn't associate Kalki with that and, and they didn't recognize me. And many times they were like, you know, um, really overly polite to me, you know, really helpful, um, but also staring at, at me and, and, you know, looking at me from a distance, not knowing how to approach. And I found myself having to, because I, I stayed in the character with the speech and everything, I found myself having to make a quick joke or something to ease them, to make them feel more comfortable. And then they're like, oh, okay, she, she has, uh, you know, a wit and she has a brain and she can... She's more normal know, she's, than yeah, we, we, we thought can, she yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. So you break that barrier. But, um, and then the, there was a time where also I was uh, in a wheelchair all day and then at the end of the day I would step out of the wheelchair when the day was of work was over. And, and that I remember there was this guy who was really sweet to me throughout, really, really nice. And, and when I got up off that wheelchair, he was really angry. And he was like, be grateful you can walk, <laughs> you know, because I think he just felt cheated. He felt like, you know, I this treated you as, on the set. yes, uh, one of the extras on the set who'd been all day with us because he behaved differently. He treated her differently than he would have treated somebody abled. Um, so we do have that problem, I think, a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And what was most challenging about playing that role? Uh, well, clearly the physicality is really, really difficult just to, to, you know, in the sense that one, of course, to, to get it right. But what does that even mean? Because each person with CP is completely different from another. So there's a certain amount of choices you have to make. How much can this person talk or walk or uh, how able or is she? So there were all those choices. So phys the physicality, but I also think the, 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 psychology of somebody who um, is, uh, is disabled and having to deal with it in a place like India where one, you're constantly dependent on others, uh, you know, just talking of bare infrastructure, you're, you're completely dependent, there's nowhere you can go without the help of a few people. Um, uh, secondly, because of the taboos that we have, that people in dis disabled people should be kept at home, shouldn't have an education with everybody else and all of that. So here's a girl who's, she comes from a, a lower middle class family and yet her parents have really sort of given said no, her the given her the freedom and said, no, we want you to go and do this. And yeah, uh, I think just finding the psychology of a person who's uh, in that chair and the way that everybody else treats you and you having to 
almost fight that and constantly uh, find a, a, a way to break other people's barriers. Uh, you know, usually it's the, I feel like it's the able people who are disabled, you know, in the way they communicate. They don't know how to uh, approach. So it's the, the disabled person who's doing the extra work and stretching out the hand, so to speak, and making the extra effort to, to, uh, to make you feel comfortable, which is so ironic. And was there any particular scene in the film that was most challenging for you to deliver? Uh, well, actually, the, the whole um, the, the sex scene, I think, was definitely the most challenging. And I thought I was really comfortable with my body and really comfortable with the whole idea. But when I was on set, you know, there were there are several people around you on the set. Um, thankfully, my my director and my cinematographer were uh, women, so that made it a little more comfortable. But it's a vulnerable place to be, um, uh, first with that uh, physicality, uh, trying to get the physicality right, having uh, to research that as well, asking people who are disabled what it's like uh, to have a sexual experience and how their body actually reacts. Mm. And, and what happens is they sort of, um, uh, the muscles tense up and, and there's a sort of spasm that happens when you orgasm. So, you know, all these details, having to have those conversations, plus then having to uh, enact that, enact that uh, and not just once, over and over, because we, you know, we, we shot the scene in, in, in different ways. Um, it, was, it was a very vulnerable place to be and I found it pretty, pretty tough. Uh, not to mention the other actor who's there and you know you're feeling awkward with that person uh, yeah yeah <laughs> tough scene so prior to your interactions with Malini and getting an insight into her life mm. did you have you know any interactions with um, people with disabilities did you have friends who had disabilities no, not at all um, I'm yeah I, 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 I had been to a blind school when I was a kid. We had visited a blind school, I remember, and we had gone to the Spastic Society in, in Bangalore, which is now re renamed ADAPT. Mm. Uh, and I had a very, yeah, a sort of basic understanding. I had seen my left foot, uh, so I knew what cerebral palsy was, but really very little. Uh, so absolutely not. And it was a lot of research that I had to do, you know, uh, just technically to understand what it is, uh, f you know, autonom at autonomically <laughs> for the yeah. body and, and the brain and how, how it works in the system, uh, biologically speaking, yeah. first of all, and then of course all the other layers. I that think you I meant uh, anatomically. Anatomically, that's the word. What <laughs> yeah. did I say? Atomically. atomically. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, you yeah. want to do that again? <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. okay. ले जा रही है हाहाहा तो 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 तो
I now feel for the cause so much because I, I know how it is and what what, what needs to be done. Uh, so I think education on, a, uh, you know, in schools from an early age, I mean, it should be essential. You should be talking about that. Integration also, uh, you know, schools, you know, being um, disabled friendly. Definitely infrastructure is the biggest problem in India for the disabled. You know, there are just no ramps anywhere. And that just is what is causing them to be isolated. Um, um, so I think, yeah, if these things were done, if there was education, awareness, and integration, you know, that would be a huge uh, change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I've got uh, another person joining us in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Her name is Deepa Narasimhan. Mm -hmm. And she's someone who's pretty much grown up in a wheelchair but she's an independent working woman she suffers from something called spinal muscular atrophy um, and um, right now her mobility is restricted to just about her face and neck and her fingers so she's going to join us to really share about her experience in being a woman mm -hmm. with disability mm -hmm. great Deepa Narasimhan is a Marketing Communications Program Manager at EMC Corporation. But not long ago, she was a young girl confined to the four walls of her home for 15 whole years. Her journey to finding independence and a degree of equality with people who are abled is inspiring. Here's her personal story, one that is the story of many young Indian women living with disabilities. Now I, I know that um, you couldn't go, you know, com you couldn't complete your schooling, and that uh, most of your growing age you were sort of within four walls. So how did you learn about all these things that you've learned about? Um, you know, how did you go find a job? Um, how have you made friends abroad? How do you have such a different perspective on your own disability? as you might have had otherwise, you know, or even as compared to your own friends, you know, with disabilities. The four walls was like a really long period of time. How long? 15 years. 15 years of just being at home. Yes. So how did I, you know, get exposed to the outer world was computers and internet. Um, my dad bought my first computer when I was, uh, when it was like, some 12 years back when it was very new to India and all that. Um, and I was the first one to subscribe the BSNL internet that came up <laughs> in my entire area. And I believe that's been my biggest um, domain for me to learn most of it. Everything, I would say. It opened up the entire gamut of the world in my you know, fingertips, right? So. Uh, that's when I understood what my condition was. Um, you know, I have a spinal muscular atrophy and um, people always called me lazy, right? They called me lazy at home because I didn't do things on a very constant basis. Like I was able to eat on my own and, you know, over a period of time, I wasn't able to do that. So they called me lazy. They said, you wanted to be fed, so you're lazy, right? So, but I understood that it was my condition um, that was, you know, deteriorating all my muscle strength, right? I was able to put my lipstick, cool my hair, but I'm not able to do most of it today. I understood my condition, um, you know, way back and I believe that was the biggest strength because I accepted that condition. I accepted what it was. That gave me room for improvement improvement in all the other areas because until then I was too sad and I was too, you know, I didn't know what was happening with me. Yeah, internet and computers and, you know, the whole world uh, which opened up was through that. And, um, and this wheelchair? Yes, the wheelchair was my, in fact, when I got this wheelchair, this is my first wheelchair that I'm sitting in. Being a person with disability from my childhood, I've never got a wheelchair, you know. My uh, parents used to lift me and you know shift me inside home, but when I got this uh, wheelchair, that's when I started exploring even inside my house. I went to the kitchen, I went to the garden, uh, you know. So this has given me so much mobility 
and freedom um, that it's just like walking, I would say, you know. And what do you do today? One good thing is I didn't give up on studies and I did my um, degree and everything to correspondence, right? Because I had my bro elder brother and my younger sister studying. So there's some amount of, um, you know, interest that I kept on to studying, right? So I did finish my education. In fact, I self-taught my studies. Okay. Right? I didn't have a personal tutor as well. So I used to love going to write my exams because that was a way to go and see like a school or like a college, right? So I used to really love that experience to be out. Um, but again, soon I was back home again inside my four bedroom wall with like a computer and all that. But um, one thing that I did was I started my blog way back. Like I used to write about my sad, four walls and my sad story of being inside, um, you know. So it was a very emotional blog and um, I started putting all my paintings. Um, I used to do like pencil sketches, so I used to scan them and put it up. So there are a lot of people who started following me, right, in that particular blog. And that's when, you know, they started giving me, um, you know, comments that, Deepa, you shouldn't, you know, be, you know, emotional about your condition or anything like that. You should go explore. You should go explore your, um, you know, your skills rather, you know, because um, you're very creative, right? And that's when I really understood that, I, okay, I was creative and I could do some amount of work uh, being in a creative field, right? So um, I started learning a lot of softwares online. And again, I, you know, couldn't go um, out for any, um, like animation studio or anything like that because they were not accessible, right? So I had to figure out my own um, material online to, you know, do my, um, you know, learnings again. So, um, so I started my freelance um, where I was building uh, websites for um, small, small firms and uh, institutes and all that. So I started making money. Very soon, um, I got a lot of projects to work on and started making money. But one thing is um, the money was there. I didn't know how to spend. So once I went ahead and bought like around 10 dresses, but there's no occasion to wear them, right? It was all there in the wardrobe. That's when I thought I should really be outside exploring the world, right? I really need to break that barrier of that four walls and go do the things that I really want to do. And um, that's how the journey began. And um, I started applying for corporates. Um, I used to clear all the rounds. There were a lot of aptitude and writing and all those, you know, six, seven rounds. The last round was uh, with the HR and somehow I, I couldn't get through it. Um, but yes, um, my current company, EMC, um, you know, happened and that was like really quick. I just zoomed into the company and uh, my manager was like, uh, he saw some work of mine and he was like, you're good to go, we are selected. I was like, are you sure? Because I had like four years of people not turning up to me and saying you're selected, right? So I've never looked back being at home. I, you know, my parents are like, we don't even get to see you now. <laughs> And even to, you know, be there, I had to do a lot of um, other things, like I had to get my car modified. Um, I had to get a helper at office who can help me, mm -hmm. right? Today, um, you know, my parents don't uh, think how I'm going to, like, take care of myself the entire day because all the years I've shown them how I can. Now they're like, yeah, deep I can do it, right? So. Beyond the education and the job, who is Deepa? What are her desires? What about her wish to find a life partner? Here are answers from her. So how do you think men look at women with disabilities? Um, and how do you think women look at women with disabilities? How do men look at women with disabilities, right? Um, in India. Okay. So I think there's a lot of aspects that 
you know, be, you know, men especially look at is, um, you know, you need support, you know. So women with disability is considered that they need, um, you know, support and they need help for them to, you know, carry on with their daily lives. That's, I believe, that's how they look at you, right? I believe that's the biggest challenge um, that, you know, that we need to get across because. Um, I know a lot of friends in the U.S. who have very similar conditions like mine, um, who have family, who have children, um, you know, they live a very normal life because they've been able to explore that area, right? And uh, whereas, um, you know, given a chance to me, uh, I could prove everything, you know, I could be like a wife and a mother and everything, but, you know, that's why... We're not ready for it as We're a not ready, yes, yes. So, you know, uh, at one level now we are accepting women to be um, independent financially and all that, you know, that, that has been um, more or less in this society now. But when it comes to women with disabilities, there's still a lot of things that uh, we have to come up with. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And people not being aware or educated about how much a person with a disability can do. And yeah. You know, right. yeah. What kind of abilities they, they just, have? Yeah, you only think about the disability, not the ability of the person. Yes. Mm. And and what about women who are abled? How do they look at women with disabilities? Do you think that's been awesome? You know, yeah, because um, uh, you know they come up to me. They're like, you want to experience something? Let's just head out for a fun trip or something like that. You know, they they really encourage me to go beyond. Uh, you know, whatever I think, right, beyond my doubts and, um, you know, they are, you know, they really tell me to go beyond, uh, to, you know, look into this aspect of being in love or, you know, finding your, compa you know, your compatibility and your, you know, companion, I would say. Um, so they encourage me a lot. And, and what about uh, your peers who themselves have disabilities? As I said, I have friends, um, you know, who um, have been able to have a family and they're, they're not Indians and they all are Americans, right? And they see me as a person who could do um, anything and everything. But when it comes to uh, people whom I know with disability, you know, my very close, um, you know, friends who have disability, they, you know, they are still trying to cope with certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And a uh, few women who have already been able to be independent, um, you know, I would call, uh, still have a doubt of this particular area. And okay. I've never had they a... They doubt their own abilities, what yes, you're saying. Yes, yes. I've never had a very positive, um, I would rather call an interaction with a an, um, friend, you know, who could uh, themselves have already explored uh, or, you know, would be able to give a little bit of uh, ideas or tips or whatever it is. We, we've not done it. Families are being too protective. You know, that's the major thing, right? Um, you know, they fear what would happen because, um, yeah. Yeah. So what's your own dating experience been like? Have you been out there trying to meet people? Where do you look for them? I, you know, have registered in multiple dating okay. websites trying to explore. I've had good conversations with, um, you know, a few people, right? Uh, we rather, you know, begin talking about our interests and, you know, it becomes more like a friendship and all that. But, yeah, it's not gone beyond it. Okay. Do you remember the first time you were attracted to a, to a guy? Yes. So what happened then? It was pretty simple. I told him that I really liked him a lot. And um, in fact, he said he likes me too. But um, I didn't know there was some, you know, pre-determined uh, script that was running back in his mind when he said he liked me, right? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, very soon I found out that he had a lot of um, reasons for him not to continue to love me. He said, this might get complicated, this is like this and this is like that. So it's good that I, you know, I fell in love with that guy and I realized that 
Internally, I was falling in love with myself. Right. It helped you discover yourself. Yes. It helped you look at yourself in a different light. Yes. Would you like me to assign a writer to you? Um, um, in fact, I've already talked to somebody. I agree, I agree to it. I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Now, um, when we look at how a middle class Indian family raises a daughter, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's raised, was raised with a certain set of expectations. Dress this way, you know, look this way, look after how you look and play this role. And there's a lot of psychological prep towards the idea of, uh, you know, as she grows older, for marriage, right? right? To play the wife role, to play the mother role, and possibly also to juggle career and, and personal life. Now, when parents raise a a girl child with a disability they take a different approach right uh, because obviously maybe they they're not they don't know how to do this any right. differently but you you know given the exposure that you have and today you're an independent working woman um, how do you look at this this stark difference it's so in your face right, right. my parents have never opened up the topic of um, marriage or you know, having someone in my life um, as a partner or anything like that. You know, um, they, they've never opened up and openly spoken to me about it. And um, I once asked my mom, uh, you know, after my sister, she's a younger sister of mine, she got married recently. Uh, she has a baby boy as well. Um, so I asked my mom, how come when I was like around 25 and 26, you didn't, you know, you didn't really ask me if I need to get married? or if I can look out for someone for you, or anything like that. Um, she bo just broke up into tears. And she said, you don't know the amount of um, you know, thing that happens whenever I think about that aspect in your life. But you know, they have taken the decision that I'm OK to be single. And you know, they believe I'll be happy and secured. Um, rather than looking into the domain of, um, you know, marriage. getting marriage, because they feel that um, we as a society have not even come up to that level where, um, you know, they can find someone for me, right? She said, if you know anyone, and if you're confident about the men, you know, we are free about it. But there's, there's, uh, there's some amount of caution that, again, comes from that, right? Either they they're not comfortable with the idea they're because they're really worried. Yes. If you think there are three things that need to change in, in people's attitude, and here we're talking about society at large in India, okay. towards a woman you know, who's living with a disability, what do you think those three things should be? First thing is the education. I believe um, every parent in India should give uh, most preference for, uh, you know, uh, the child for education. And, um, you know, the parents should also get some amount of counseling at the initial uh, period of life when the you know when they have a child with disability um, in terms of even understanding what the disability is and how they can support their child right so that both the child and the parent is aware of certain aspects of life and they can have that full life right so that's very important and uh, the second thing right um, it's more the social burden that they take. In India, people don't want to tell anyone about their children's disability. Right? They rather cover it up, right, than you know really exploring you know the option. So I believe there should be openness about it, right, and that itself will you know bring them a lot of aspects in life. The third thing is, you know, give your child all the um, I would say all the willingness for he or she to take a decision 
you know the authority the freedom the freedom mm -hmm. and the yeah you know for them to decide what they want to choose in life i believe uh, that itself will make the person more stronger um, in terms of the decision making if kalki kochlin and deepa narsimhan were to ask each other questions what would they be I let the women talk and the questions included everything from those on independence to those on the type of guys they each like. Their honest answers as young women are touching. Kalki and Deepa, what's it meant for you two to meet each other and hear each other talk? It's ab about this. It's been great for me to listen to Deepa actually because um there's so many similarities i can draw to uh, shanali's script and you know the experiences that she she has in her story of you know wanting to get out there and meet people and you know it's the other people's attitude that is um sort of behind she you know she goes out with this sort of very positive you know want to meet people and and you know talk to them and it's everybody else who's a bit like i don't know what to how to handle this and stuff you know there's another thing i, I remember thinking when you were talking is uh, shonali always describes this story what started her to write the script was she was uh, it was malini's birthday and they went out to a pub uh, in london they were uh, going out for a drink and uh, shonali said what do you want for your 40th birthday it's a big birthday so shonali said really loudly i want to have sex <laughs> okay <laughs> the whole pub was like so it's it, that started her on this idea of why don't we explore the story of a teenage girl you know with a disability and who's curious and wants to know what it's like to have an experience and you know falls in love and has all those ideas that all of us have when we are reaching a certain yeah. age um so yeah which was similar to what you were describing um you know the romance that you have and stuff malini is hugely romantic she reads mills and moons and she's always writing romantic stuff yeah i believe that's how i you know started off with yeah a lot of mills and moons yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think a lot of us did yeah <laughs> <laughs> and for me to be here um is of course the movie right when i saw the you know trailer i was like yay finally someone you know knows what i'm thinking and you know knows what you know what a person is right mm. you know up uh, outside apart from the disability apart from the disability right and and of course i always order margarita with this <laughs> yes I'm i do glad. really looking forward for it. yeah you know seeing the entire movie Yeah, for it to release in India. Yeah, I'm and also looking forward to it releasing. Um, yeah. I'm taking a bunch of men to watch <laughs> that too. Yeah, <laughs> 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 very good idea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Kalki, if if you could ask a question to Deepa, mm. what would it be? Mm. There's, there's so many questions. I'm trying to think about the most important one. Okay, two then. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, like. how would you see yourself living alone at any point would you want to be uh, out of the house or do you, do you feel ever do you feel that want to to sort of move I, in india i think it would be very difficult but you know uh, i know that for example with malini she loves going to london because she can live on her own there she doesn't because you're not so dependent because there's so much more facilities so do you ever have that aspiration um So, you know, recently I went to Tokyo, right? And I'm like I was telling my friend that I'm going to find a Japanese man. Mm -hmm. Tokyo is amazingly accessible and they're very friendly as well, you know, you know, that's what I saw, you know, for the 10 days that I was there, right? Um so definitely I you know, I wish I have a chance to be on my own, right? Because Yeah, I I just want to tell my friends I can be on my own and you know and be my by myself, you know, and that would give them I think more peace in their life. Currently in India, I wouldn't take a chance. But yes, you know, definitely in US or you know other places because um it's it's you know friendlier for people uh, you know in wheelchairs. So nonetheless, you know i'm open 
And uh, what type of guy do you like? <laughs> <laughs> like okay. like what, it, what 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 makes you fall in love with a guy um of course intelligence right um you know because i don't know i kind of like people who are very smart and intelligent i would say uh, very easy for us <laughs> and um definitely someone who has more views in life views about life, right? Mm -hmm. Who has the depth about... Who's explored life. Yes, yes. Has yeah, yes. seen the world. Yes. That would be a little more fun to be with, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I like explorers too. <laughs> <laughs> and what would be your two questions to Kalki? Yeah, so what inspired you to be part of the... You know, this film? Yes. It was a, for me, as an actor, it's, it's a great opportunity to to you know try and get inside the mind and body of a person who has a disability and honestly i knew nothing about uh, cerebral palsy before i did the film you know except for my left foot i'd seen that film but otherwise i knew very little so for me it was you know i learned so much uh, when, with my characters i about people about human beings and that excites me to understand the mind and the body of somebody different from myself so that always excites me, and this was like a once, how, it's such a rare opportunity. Nobody makes films f about disability, and especially a female pr protagonist. Mm -hmm. It's always a male protagonist. And on top of that, you know, the, the exploration of sexuality is just, ne I've never heard of that in a film before. There's been one film called The Sessions, I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that came out after I'd read the script. But before that, I'd heard of nothing where somebody actually tackles this. So it's. So it was for me a very original and exciting project. Yeah. My second important one, you know, I just want to really uh, hear it from you. So being in that space of life, what would your advice be to me? Right. Being like what it felt like to be, s yes. to have CP you're saying? Yes. What would my and advice and be to advice you? Advice or like, what would you tell me, like, you know, You've been there, you've done that, mm. you know, in the movie, so you've lived the character, mm. right? So, I mean, that's a, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, yeah, being there and, and having sat in that wheelchair and have people who didn't know I was abled, you know, treat me very differently because they thought I was disabled and you know, being a bit patronizing to me and, you know, uh, speaking down to me like I might be a bit stupid or you know might not be able to answer their questions and having to constantly um, find a way to break that barrier with people um, I make them comfortable make as them you were comfortable. saying yeah. I think the best and most important thing or weapon that you can have is a sense of humor uh, because that always puts people at ease and I say this of my own life as well when I feel like I'm put in the spotlight because I you know, people stare at you for being a celebrity or whatever, that, you know, you can be in, feel really awkward sometimes. And I think a sense of humor, you know, really helps. Um, just make people feel a lot more uh, lighter immediately and, and uh, you know, feel like they can, you know, approach you and, and talk to you. So, um, yeah, I would say, uh, I think you already have it. I don't think I need to give you advice because you, you already have a big smile and a sense of humor. Did you find that difficult to be? Uh, I found it very difficult, very difficult. Honestly, I was um, very restrained and depressed. I felt uh, like physically, obviously, because I didn't get out of my chair. I stayed in my chair the whole time. I felt... Um, frustrated because I was dependent on people all the time to move me here, get me there, get me that, you know, uh, I wanted to do it all myself, but I, you know, stayed in that character, so I didn't do it. And there's something Malini told me once, which really hit me hard, which when we were working together and we were both on wheelchairs and we were playing around and spent the day together. And then at the end of the day, I got up and left my wheelchair and said bye to her and left. And she said, you know, at the end of your day, you can always get up and walk. And that's the difference. And, you know, that really like put me in a, a place where I was like, I'm never going to fully understand what it's like.
to, f to, you know, to be in that situation. I can empathize to a certain degree. Um, so it's, a, it's not an easy place to be. <laughs> but I feel that there's, a, there's always an attitude and you, you know, people, human beings are, live in, inside their head. And I think you know, who you are inside is, is what makes you who you are. Uh, and that can't be more true than somebody who, who has limitations on their physical body. You know, they probably have a, a chance to really face them, their true self because they can't escape. We, we, we live in a world of escapism, I feel. We live in a world where we're constantly like, yeah, we need to go party and we need to go do this. And, you know, uh, it's about glamour. And, you know, we see these magazines and everything looks perfect and everybody is beautiful. Th the truth is we're beautiful for a maximum of 10 years. And then we grow old and our bodies start deteriorating. We all have these things. You guys face that from a very early age. So in a way, you're sort of getting in touch with your inner person a lot sooner and I, I mean I guess that makes you a lot more mature than most, <laughs> most Absolutely. adults. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think I'd like to close this conversation with a question to you the viewer. Um, how do you look at a person with a disability? And if you the viewer are the person with a disability, how do you look at yourself? Thank you. <laughs>